we're ready. Call the meeting to order. Welcome everybody and Mary if you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready to begin? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> flag was any higher, it would be a very strange workers' comp claim. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Wednesday, August 5th, regular board meeting, High Desert Water District. Um, item two, roll call. Here. Director Mays. Here. Vice President Huff. Here. President Statham. Here. Director Graham. And Director Muncie is absent is tonight. Fighting fires. Okay. Item three is approval of the agenda. I so move. I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call for uh, roll call vote. Vice President Huff. Yes. President Statham. Yes. Director Mays. Yes. Director Graham. Thanks, Barry. Item four, public comment. This is the opportunity for members of the public to address the board on matters within the board's jurisdiction that are not listed on the agenda. Please limit comments to three minutes or less. State law prohibits board directors from discussing or taking action on items not included on the agenda. Do we have anyone that would like to speak on public comment at this time? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the board. Move on to the consent calendar. Items on the consent calendar are acted upon by one motion, unless a member wishes an item to be acted upon separately, in which case it will be removed from the consent calendar. We've got four items. A, the demand list, checks number 85296 through 85431. Item B, the wastewater demand list, checks number 1923 through 1941. Item C, the payroll demand list, 723-2015, and item D, approval of the Sage Estates Will Serve Agreement. I'm going to take a motion. So I have a motion and a second to, to approve the consent calendar. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, Mary, roll call vote, please. President Statham. <laughs> yes. Director Graham. Director Mays. Yes. Vice President Huff. Thank you. Item six, additional floodplain analysis. Staff recommends that the board authorize the general manager to enter into a contract with Tetra Tech, Inc. in the amount of $73,016 for additional floodplain analysis of the wastewater reclamation facility property. And it looks like Assistant General Manager Mark Bann leading the charge in this. Gotcha. Thank you, President State and members of the board. Uh, the floodplain analysis district had uh, performed initially, basically outlines the inundation of flood waters uh, due to a 100 year flood. So it's important um, while designing our plans that we take that into recognition. When Tetra Tech uh, completed this initial study, it was to meet uh, federal funding requirements. So what was what was given to the feds was, was enough uh, information for them to approve the funding that we were getting. However, due to a lack of FEMA information on coming to the wash, south of this, uh, with the nautical wash actually begins, uh, Tetra Tech wasn't able to form a 2D model, and the constraints of that inundation mapping uh, could vary either greatly in either condition or it could be a minuscule amount. So um, staff would like to do its due diligence, perform the 2D mapping on the sites, and approve uh, it with Tetra Tech uh, performing the work since they already approved the project and have all the information. That includes our report by Captain questions that are public. Thanks, Mark. Public comment on this item? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Board discussion? Yes. Any board discussion? Yes. Yes. Um, I see the real reason for this. Um, you know, we talk about 100 year floods, 500 year floods. It doesn't happen we're in the desert. But a number of years ago, there was a storm that hit the uh, 
Joshua Tree National Park came down along the Tender Road, broke through the dirt and berm, and came through that field and didn't go down into the Yucca Wash. It came right across the street into the house on the main highway and back a block from the highway. So I would hate to see our property, our new facilities be flooded with that gunky clay stuff and uh, we need to take the precaution. So I'm all in favor of this. Uh, I think it's very, very important. Yeah. I wanted to comment as well Right. Um, I, I find it interesting that um, having, having lived here for Jupiter's almost 40 years now, that I have experienced a 100-year flood about three times. It seems like every 10 years we get a 100-year flood. It might not happen across the street, but boy, if it happens on top of you, it is an amazing event to experience. So we have to figure that it's going to happen, and we have to be prepared, and so now's the time to do it. And I think it makes sense to do so source in this case, since they are familiar with the project, and it's a continuation of work previously done. I have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Director Graham. Yes. President Statham. Yes. Vice President Huff. Yes. Director Mays. Yes. Okay, moving on. Item 7. Geographic Information System Wastewater Reclamation Project. Staff recommends that the board authorize the general manager to enter into a contract with Noble Systems in the... Is that Noble or Nobel? Nobel. Nobel systems in the amount of $54,900 for various geographic information system, GIS, startup services associated with the reclamation project. Mark Ben. Thank you, President State and members of the board. Uh, one thing that we've talked about a lot, actually, this past year is our GIS system for the water side. And one of those things that we've talked about is the substantial effort that we've had to put forth to bring that system to an accurate level that's comfortable for our guys in the field to utilize, to locate mains and perform the maintenance that we need to do. Um, even out of all the work that we've still put into that, you know, without digging up some of those areas, there's some areas that will still remain slightly on the unknown side as to what exactly we have there until, of course, you have to be through and replace those areas. So this basically gets us started off on the right foot. It's going to allow us to take all of our plans that we have and develop for the wastewater collection system get them moved into our geo database and all those line segments become part of our typical geo viewer. So we'll be able to see all of our lines uh, on basically programs that we already have. Um, in addition to this, um, you know, Nobel throughout the project with this cost will continue to update those sections as those plans change with as builds and things like that. So it'll, it'll remain fluid. And then also um, they'll be making uh, several different types of checklists for us to utilize uh, with contractors that will be working in the field. So when changes do occur, they'll be able to GIS that location, fill out a chart as to what changed, and then send that back to the staff so that we can manage that as well and our construction of the future. That concludes our report. I'll be happy to answer any questions at the public time. Thank you, Mark. Public comment on this item? I would also like, yeah, I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, this, this item doesn't have any additional bids with it because uh, they all are sort of supposed to buy our work. Okay, well, uh, seeing no public comment, I'll bring it back to the board. Director Grant. Yeah, um, we said that there might be some updated that will we'll get the additional charges added on, or does that include for a period of time? Yeah, you get so much. Uh, I think on this contract, there was a, uh, a $10,000 annual maintenance fee, which is what we pay for our water side. Uh, you don't get as many changes as what we'll get with this, but he's assured me throughout the entire project, whatever changes happen. I think it's a wonderful tool for communications, not only for staff, but also
also for the uh, construction that will be coming in and the communications between organizations. They can be checking in on something and not having to go through do or head uh, on, on every little detail. Plus, the checks and balances of all the details, the millions of details, over and over uh, to put all that stuff in. It's just amazing. And so I'm definitely for it. I'm, uh sort of feel like I have one foot in the old world where that didn't exist and you had old plans that were in some drawer somewhere or a 20 plus year employee where most of the plans are in his head and you don't dare let him retire because there, there goes your GIS system. So this is very 21st century and positive and far away than that. Um, I, I agree that it's uh, very appropriate. So I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. So one call vote, please. Director Mays? Yes. Director Graham? Vice President Huff? Yes. President Statham? Yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, item 8 Asphalt Grinder Purchase. Staff recommends that the board authorize the general manager to purchase one asphalt grinder and trailer in the amount of $98,490 from the lowest qualified bidder, Asphalt Zipper, Inc. And again, Assistant General Manager, Mark Van. Thank you, President State and members of the board. Uh, this will add to our CRP equipment uh, that we're utilizing for the $7.2 million grant we got for phase one water main replacements. Uh, typically, in the, in the past, CRP utilized one of these. Uh, I believe the model is 1995 here, I think. Um, that's the one that we currently have uh, available to us in our vehicle inventory or equipment inventory. Um, it's gotten quite old over the years, and here lately, over the past few years, CRP has been uh, contracting that portion of the work out uh, to an asphalt grinding company. Um, in order to make that worthwhile for the district, they have to come up and grind a substantial amount of trench for us uh, so that they can get it all done within one to two days. And, and uh, you know, basically it equals, you know, probably a third of the project doesn't talk somewhere in that range. Um, because we'll be working along some really busy roads and because uh, of scheduling conflicts that we've been noticing with uh, the asphalt grinding company, staff's recommending purchasing a new NID so that we don't get caught up in scheduling also we'd be drying portions of the road and specific to the workload that we have that day and not have to leave uh, just as a trench open uh, for, for days. That concludes my report. I'll be happy to answer any questions at the public comment. Thank you, Mark. Public comment on this item. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Start down this way again. I am uh, uh, glad for this. I think that the $23,336 savings from top to the bottom, I think that's well worth it to, for our consideration. Uh, I talked to Tony, uh, who is the head of the CRP crew, and he filled me in on all the details, or a lot of them anyway, and uh, he is sold for it, and the staff is sold on this, and the equipment will be uh, a great blessing to our staff and the accomplishment to get more fish. So I'm for it. I, I agree with all of that. I do have one question about budget. Was this uh, anticipated? Is this in the budget? This item wasn't included in our equipment budget, so it was an additional in addition to it. But I think there's there is enough money to in the budget to cover this. Okay. All right. That works for me then. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. I have a motion and a second. Mary, roll call vote, please. Director Mays? Yes. Vice President Huff? Yes. President Statham? Yes. Director Graham? Yes. Okay, moving on. Item 9 is the wastewater update. And I'm not sure who's leading the charge on this. I'll start. Okay. <laughs> so, one of the things that uh, Cam and myself did uh, was go and visit Los Osos uh, since the last board meeting. And while I was there, I wanted to kind of take a couple pictures to bring back uh, to, to show everyone on the board the uh, same things we saw out there. So this is basically a typical street out there in Los Osos, and you can see uh, one of the reasons that we really wanted to pave uh, from curb to curb, or from side edge of road to edge of road, rather, um, is because of what you see here. Down the left side, um, a substantial amount of overlay due to the trench. You can see it probably broke off in several spots as we were going down the 
uh, the trench line there. And then every single one of those other little black top patches uh, crossing laterally there are the service laterals going to the home. So wherever one of those are is another patch uh, to deal with. So it doesn't, uh, doesn't look as pretty as Pretty much, yes, yes, yes. And in fact, you know, I, I was told that uh, you know a lot of people actually enjoy the roads on this portion because a lot of the bad parts were gone. I guess they were really poor reality, uh, having a lot of problems with them. So, so even the distance better than what they have. Correct, correct, yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, this is just another picture of that same thing on the right side. There you have their, uh, their wastewater line going up, and then back on the left side of the road, there, there's a recycled water line. That's kind of the main thoroughfare of this town. And then you hardly see it, a lot of them had a lot of stuff over the top of it, but right there basically to the middle right of the screen, you'll see that little white cap partially covered by this piece of the straw there. Um, that's basically exactly what the district uh, will be leaving on the property uh, line of each uh, private property connection. It's just a clean out of the cap on it. So, so when the private property connection See where a back oak could sit behind that portion of it, pick that up, and not have to get up on the streets. And then just a quick picture of their clarifier. They have building and construction right now, their wastewater reclamation facility there. Those are your, your rock stitches, which of course goes from the district's MDR system that will be using. And then just a the uh, architecture picture there, what they're trying to, to achieve all their buildings are southward facing through that area to accommodate uh, solar panels in the future. So, so the big thing about the, the, the trip, you know, Kevin and I both uh, gained a lot of uh, contacts. You know, we discussed, uh, you know, with their construction managers. We spoke with the, the project manager, Don Waddell, he's extremely helpful. And it's it's really neat, A, to see that the district is, is on the right track and has identified a lot of the issues that they've had in the past. And it's also good to see, you know, some of those uh, public outreach material and things of that nature that uh, they utilize throughout construction and stuff to try to, you know, keep the public informed and use with the uh, construction of the So it was a really worthwhile trip. I learned a lot. Um, uh, tomorrow, a uh, request for qualifications will be leading uh, the district out into the world for our progressive build uh, the wastewater reclamation facility so this is a big uh, big step in the right direction um, that'll be out for about two weeks before we hold a uh, free request for qualifications meeting that's not mandatory for anyone to show up and ask any questions uh, before their submittals are due and then on September 3rd 2015 at 2 p.m. Uh, those statements and qualifications will be that's the deadline for them to be delivered to the district uh, and we'll begin our review process of that so sometime Shortly after, once we've scored those, we'll schedule the, uh, we'll shortlist them for the community, and we'll also schedule the interview process, which will also include the request for proposals. And that concludes that. You know, I would just add that we're getting more interest now, too, in the construction management side for the construction of the collection system. And this week, uh, Mark Bittman and I went to BB&K to go through the easement process. So we're going to give, it's called the Notice of Resolution, we'll be bringing that to the board in September, where potentially the properties listed may go to eminent domain. You know, we have about 80 where we've contacted them, they've corresponded, but then they've just kind of stopped. So we're going to start the process. We think most of those will be settled. And there's about 30, though, that we haven't located right now. So we've given them the firms to seek and search, and hopefully they'll find them. But if they don't, then we may have to go through the process in order to secure the uh, property for our project. In reality, there's 188 owners that have agreed to the district's term as far as their reasons go. And there's like 25 that are with San Bernardino County Flood Control District that we would expect to have here real soon when we're working with. Um, so the numbers get real close. To what and I got a call from the Senior Center, so next week and the week after, uh, we'll be going to two of their luncheons to talk about and update the project to them.
you know, um, it's not going to, you know, the we get possession, but we don't, we get le possession to use it, but we haven't settled on the price. So until that, that would go through the courts, and if we can never uh, find an owner, but the attorney assured us we do have possession to put in our system. So it should not delay it. to uh, item 10, reports and comments, 10A, director's reports and comments, Director Red. On the proposal for the strategic plan development organizational assessment, uh, nine went out. We're only going to get probably seven back. The Gavaris group said they have a full schedule till springtime. And then Mr. Melton stopped by the office and he's going to be doing some traveling. So he said he's not going to be able to partake in that. But he did offer his services on an as needed basis when he is available to help us. He's very willing to do that. On the CFO recruitment, um, out of all the applications received so far, Jill has selected seven for an interview. The panel is going to start interviewing on August 25th. Uh, Monday, next Monday, I'll be at the regional board. They actually did kind of a organizational assessment themselves. So the consultants, <laughs> we're going to have a meeting at the City of Indian Wells to go over 
his findings as far as what's going on at the regional board staff level and what they may need. And then you mentioned the 100 year flood. I remember a number of years ago when we had issues at the nitrate facility. And the big thing was that our plant was built for a 100 year flood, but according to Mr. Jensen, we had a 200 year flood. So that's why the warranty didn't stand. And when I did my research, it's pretty interesting because you can't get anyone to really quantify what a 100 year flood or, or what a 102 year flood is. Hey Ed, could you go back to the CFO recruitment process? You said that there are uh, seven candidates that have been identified uh, to go to the next step of interview, but the interview won't be until when? Well, she's right now she has it scheduled for August 25th because more applications are coming in. Oh, I see. All right. Okay. And so then there'll be a panel interview with a couple of the staff members and maybe someone from the town, someone from another water district. They'll do the initials, we'll come to a cut, and then I'll be part of the next interview and then the staff that she, uh, they'll be working with will also we have an interview for them too. Okay, moving on, item 11, future agenda items requested by the board. Any future agenda item requests? Yeah, I anticipate that uh, probably a closed session next week. <coughs> all right. Well, short meeting. Thank you all very much for coming and uh, we'll adjourn the meeting.